Full rock and roll in Texas. I wrote the first article that was ever done about the venue's opening. I wrote, a new performance space will open in Norfolk later this month, which its owners hope will become a meeting place for writers and performing artists. My name is Cynthia, Cynthia Tatamy. And an intimate showcase for new plays, live music, and a variety of stage experiments, including poetry. Hey, we are the band Bison. And as you can see, I've set up my wonderful Scrabble board. We renew the city by writing songs and playing them for people and hoping that they bring people the same joy listening to them as we get from playing them. The arts help inspire people to go out and dream and be more than they can be. It also brings in money to other areas and peoples. And we'd like to take a trip inside the venue and see how things have turned out. So, Garney Johnson, tell us, how do you renew the city? Well, when someone asks for money, I give it to them. But only if I have the exact amount they ask for. So if someone comes up and says, hey, you got 42 cents? Sorry, I only have quarters. You should have aimed higher. I usually give you quite a bit of grace if you put down a word I don't know. But if it's a high scoring word, I might have to challenge it. inside the venue now and uh, I'm talking to the guardian at the door, <laughs> Lucy White, who is the co-founder of this, uh, this remarkable little place. What about the venue gives you the most satisfaction? It's like coming to see your family every Monday night. It's just watching people perform and then how they start out at one level and then in, in a couple of months they're way up at another level. I think uh, we also have the co-founder, uh, Lucy's co-founder, Patty Ray, somewhere in the house here. I do admire you for trying to help other actors. Actors are not always the most generous of people to their peers. How many actors does it take to change a light bulb? Just one, but the rest of them sit around and think, I could have done it better. I appreciate you telling me I'm generous because sometimes I don't feel as generous as I'm being claimed to be. I mean, I'm an actor also, I do have an ego. <laughs> I try to rein in my ego but I do believe in the reciprocity of things. One of the reasons we opened this was not only to give local performing artists a home, but uh, particularly near and dear to my heart was to give the Playwrights Forum a home. I'm sitting here at a table at the venue with Gene Klein, who is a member of the Playwrights Forum. We have found a permanent home here, which has been absolutely wonderful given us a place to have cold readings around the table so that when we have a first draft we can come and everybody can tell us how bad it is and we'll say we know, we know, we know and then we can go back and fix it. I'm in Kerouac Cafe. I'm upstairs and I'm looking at the famous wall. Something has changed within me. Something is not the same, etc. First production is really hard to get. The second one is even harder. Everybody wants the world premiere, and once you've had your world premiere, you're out there sort of waving, hey, hey, and they say, well, is this for, for first production? And if you have to say no, they say, well, you know. So it's the second production that's really the hardest to get. So we're trying to start uh, an, a branch of the second light. 
series down here. I can't really tell what that is. It looks like a nose. It could be Cyrano de Bergerac. It could be Scaramouche. Or it could be Phantom of the Opera. It could be anything. I think that's kind of a shame that people don't recognize that we've got equity people here. We've got professional film people. We've got professional actors. We've got professional writers. We sometimes feel like prophets in our own land. Right. Like, what, what, what does she know? You know, she comes from here. <laughs> right, right, right. So I have to go out of town to have people think I know anything. We both had careers as physical therapists, ah. and um, we, we got into the healing arts, and we felt like the arts would be another way that we could keep contributing to community is using the arts to, uh, to help heal societal ills. Right, right. I just recently got my hair cut again, but this time I went completely bald. <laughs> There's this organization called St. Baldrick's and they do research for cancer for children. And I had a younger brother who had died from cancer. And so when I heard about it, I thought, you know, that would be a cool thing to be involved with. And it was wild. Let me tell you, I went into this room. <laughs> there were stylists and barbers all across the wall. And all these people were sitting in chairs and getting their hair cut. Well, but it's different to be sitting in a chair and getting bust cut in front of all these people. Okay, as an artist, that was a very vulnerable thing for me to do. It's crazy. But it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Of course, every theater has to have its technical aspect. And here we have the small but uh, efficient and effective uh, tech room at the venue. And I'd like to take you inside to meet one of the techies. Viewing the situation, can a fellow be a villain all his life? All the trials and tribulations, better settle down and get myself a wife. And a wife will cook and soak for me, she'll come for me and go for me, she'll go for me and nag at me, the finger she will wag at me, the money she will take from me, a misery she'll make of me. I think I better think it out again. I'm back to my look. This, my dear, is my look. Don't steal it, okay? Don't get it twisted. <laughs> Got to pick a pocket or two, boy. This is John Magic, who ran lights at the first show that was ever done here, which happened to be the one that I was in. So let's, uh, let's take to the stage now and meet the host of this open mic, this famous open mic. This is Gayla Robinson, uh, uh, our host at the open mic. So how do you find hosting? Is it any different from being a performer? Yes, very different because I now have the responsibility of encouraging people on stage, and if I say the wrong thing, I might discourage them from coming back. And I know people are very sensitive about their faces. What do you think the venue adds to your life? When I started coming here initially, I was very, very timid. Mm -hmm. And I um, yes, I literally would want to sing my song and get off stage as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. And you know, meeting you, and seeing you perform and how comfortable you are on stage um, and other seasoned artists, it's inspired me to take aspects of your performing and infuse it in my own mm -hmm. to be able to better connect with the audience. Every time I come to the cafe, I come up here and see if I can find something new. The way that I did Fagan is I started out Jack Sparrow, added a little Smeagol, and then uh, Jeffrey Rush from Shakespeare in Love and put it all together and that's how you get an old fate. So without the venue, you'd be less of a person. You know, as strong as it sounds, yeah, yeah that's definitely. What it sounds like um, to me. I've definitely grown. Yeah, so, and, and uh, it's quite, a, quite an opportunity then for other young artists. The song I wrote is titled Life, and I wrote it about two months ago about my frustration as an artist and wanting to get my songs out there, but not always having a platform to do it. Many times I don't share about my frustrations as an artist. I just sing the song and then I get off stage, but 
by writing this um, particular topic about my frustrations, I was able to let a lot of the audience in. What is it about the venue that's special for you? If you're thinking about cutting your hair for whatever reason, I would highly suggest raise some money and get your hair cut for a good cause. It, it was great. It was great. Uh, it's wonderful. It's, uh, it's cozy. It's comfortable. And uh, it's, uh, it gives uh, possibilities to all kinds of performers. to do in this world I wonder if there is time I think of all my hopes my dreams everything but it's stuck inside how is it some are able to have I was extremely sunburned at the uh, last year's beer fest and uh, became a, an official fan of aloe vera on Facebook. Next to the stage is someone who is really talented and I thoroughly enjoy hearing her poems, Lady S. I'm glad that on Facebook you like it and you don't love it because I don't want people to get the wrong idea like I'm using it for something else. Wouldn't it be nice if the hard-working mother cleaning toilets all day had enough to pay the bills that she had to pay? If the father who was disabled but still went to work had enough to feed his child? Wouldn't that make you smile? Took the book that said we were all equal and found reasons to make slaves. We bury lives in diamond mines and live men in caves. Bury the grief and uncertainty. I just want to be happy. We pay people more to tell us about shaking booty and baby do me than we do a class from teacher. Baseball player in the field makes more than the struggling preacher in the bleachers. So, this is my tribute to the idea that we are all equal. And if you disagree, argue with the fact that we are all just people. You don't get a free monologue. No, you have to pay to see my performances. <laughs> I have to say, I'd be remiss if I didn't add that uh, Jawa here is my best friend, <laughs> my yes. wife, and my lover. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> have faith in yourself. Have faith in a higher being. Be prepared. Be balanced. Do things out of love. Stay in school and don't do drugs. And then someone stuck a card here, and this is watercolor. There's a rainbow and flowers and a little thing at the top that says, give back. I hope sometime you'll come by and check us out if you haven't done so. And if you have, please come back as soon as you can. Thanks very much.